with the objective of getting every woman on hormone replacement. And all of a sudden, all of these women started getting, you know, uterine cancer and, and breast cancer. Because menopause is such a hush-hush subject in our society, oftentimes women don't know where to turn for help with the difficult symptoms that are common during this transition. So they turn to their doctors, many of whom will recommend that they take hormone replacement therapy. But the decision to take hormone therapy during and after menopause is a complicated one for women because there are health risks associated with taking hormones. And so I offer you this video with love, spoken woman to woman, to give you the facts, help educate you, and cut through the myths and outdated information so you can make an informed decision about what's best for you and your health during this time of great change in your life. The clinical data and recommendations contained in this video are based on my own personal research from available public sources. I am not a medical practitioner, and this is not meant to be medical advice. After all, menopause and perimenopause are not medical problems, but rather a natural course of life for all women. It is my hope that this video will help empower women to accept and cherish every stage of their lives. Hi everybody, it's Linda. Welcome back to Tips For You. Well, today I have another menopause video for you. I want to talk to you about hormone replacement therapy. It's also called HRT for short. And I want to do this video because I want to share the facts with you. I'm very disappointed about the narrative that I have come across on YouTube and elsewhere directed towards women at their most vulnerable time in life where we are going through a very difficult transition. I think the information that's being put out to women is from the dark ages. It is from a time before we had all the information that we do now. I want to share with you um, what I've learned and I want to support you in your decision, but I want you to have all the facts. I want you to know what you're getting yourself into. Using hormone therapy has big risk factors. I'm going to get into them in a big in a, in, a, in just a moment and you need to be aware of them so you can make an educated choice. Back in 1993, there was a tremendous clinical study done, clinical trials and observational studies on women menopausal age women between 50 and 79. It's the, it was one of the biggest studies ever done in the United States. It was called the Women's Health Initiative and it was a multi-million dollar 20 plus year project sponsored by the National Institutes of Health and the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute and it originally enrolled 161,808 postmenopausal women. And of those postmenopausal women, 27,347 of them participated in one of the major components of the Women's Health Initiative, which was the randomized control clinical trials that were being done to study the effects of hormone replacement therapy for the prevention of heart disease, osteoporosis, and breast cancer. And they also evaluated the effects of hormone therapy on endometrial cancer in women that had a uterus. For the purposes of this study, they separated the 27,347 women into two groups, those that had a uterus and those that did not have a uterus because they had a hysterectomy. And the reason that they did that is because they had to give two different types of hormone therapy to these women depending on whether they had a uterus or not. If you don't have a uterus, they give you estrogen only. And if you have a uterus, they give you estrogen plus progestogen because they need to give you progestogen in order to prevent endometrial cancer, which is cancer in the uterus lining. I just want to clarify something because I noticed I used two different words and I don't want to confuse you, but progestogen and progestin mean the same thing. Those are the names given to synthetic hormones, 
that are created in a lab that are to try to mimic the natural hormone progesterone. The natural hormone progesterone is produced by the adrenal glands and the ovaries in women. So this giant study was stopped early because it was found that the risks far outweighed the benefits. The trial of estrogen plus progestin was stopped three years early in 2002 because of an increased risk of breast cancer, heart disease, stroke, blood clots, and overall harm. Please take note of the increased risk percentages of these diseases. They are statistically significant. And the trial of the estrogen-only group was stopped one year early, in 2004, because of increased risk of stroke and blood clots and no overall benefit. And they found no benefit for cardiac heart disease. And regarding breast cancer, it was a bit more favorable than with the estrogen plus progestin, but it still increased a woman's risk of getting breast cancer if she had higher baseline risk and when it was used for more than 10 years. Again, ladies, look at the percentages of the increased risks. They are significant. I want to take a moment to mention another study that was done on the effects of taking estrogen-only hormone replacement. I think it's very important for women who have had a hysterectomy to know about. It was conducted by the United States National Cancer Institute's Division of Epidemiology, and it was done between 1978 and 1998, and it studied 31,354 women average age 56 at the start of the study, and what they found was an increased risk of developing ovarian cancer in women who took estrogen only, and that this risk increased over time. So, not only does taking estrogen-only hormone therapy cause uterine cancer in women that have a uterus, but it can cause ovarian cancer in women that do not have a uterus, but still have one or both of their ovaries. Now I'll return to the data from the Women's Health Initiative study. The Women's Health Initiative trials found that taking either estrogen plus progestin or estrogen only increased a woman's risk of developing dementia and Alzheimer's disease by 15 to 38 percent, and it increased urinary incontinence and bladder infections by 50 to 60 percent, and it increased gallbladder disease also by 50 to 60 percent. And they also studied the effects of hormone treatment on other symptoms and quality of life, and they found mixed results. They found that mood and depression were not affected, that vaginal dryness was relieved, but vaginal discharge was increased, that headaches increased or developed, and that there was an increased risk of hysterectomy. Vaginal bleeding was also very common in the estrogen plus progestin group, and breast tenderness increased two to fourfold. Now, to be fair, there were some positive findings that came out of the study, and they were that hot flashes and night sweats in women ages 50 to 54 were decreased by 64% in the estrogen and progestin group, and 28% in the estrogen-only group, and hip fractures had also decreased. Unfortunately, though, these benefits were temporary because once treatment was stopped, hot flashes and night sweats increased, and any benefits to hip fractures were lost. So by taking hormone replacement therapy, you are risking your future health for a natural process that's temporary, a process that your body knows how to deal with, and you're taking this risk in your midlife, which is a time in life when a person naturally, due to age, is at an increased risk for developing certain diseases. Not a great risk reward ratio, if you ask me. What do you think? Let me know below in the comments. As a result of this study, hormone replacement therapy is now being called hormone therapy. Because the new thinking is that you are not trying to replace your estrogen, your hormones. You are not trying to compensate that thinking is no longer useful. It is no, this study proved that women don't have to compensate for the loss of their hormones. 
um, they are not at risk for diseases suddenly because they don't have estrogen. You are at no more risk for disease because you've lost your estrogen and you've gone through menopause than you were before. The only thing that causes any kind of increase in disease risk is age. That's it. We're getting older and there's nothing we can do about that. And I feel like we should feel blessed that we are in this age and that we're going through menopause because you're alive. And the good news for women is that as a result of the Women's Health Initiative clinical trials, hormone therapy use among menopausal and postmenopausal women in the United States declined from 44% usage in 1988 to 1994 to 4.7% usage in 2010. You may also be interested to know that the United States Preventative Services Task Force which is the governing body of independent medical experts that put forth guidelines and recommendations for the preventative health services for the population of the United States, does not recommend hormone therapy for the prevention of chronic diseases in postmenopausal women, including women who have had a hysterectomy. They state that the harms significantly outweigh any benefit, and they refer to both the pill or oral form and the patch or transdermal form of HRT. Now that we know the dangers of hormone therapy, let's expose some of these false narratives and scare tactics. Because you may be wondering, where did this false narrative come from that women should take hormone replacement therapy or risk not only losing their youthfulness, but leaving themselves susceptible to life-threatening diseases? Well, it all started many years ago with a book that was sold to the masses and it was called Feminine Forever and the author of the book was Robert Wilson, a Manhattan gynecologist with strong financial ties to hormone drug makers. He demeaned women, played on their insecurities and used pseudoscience and scientific sounding promises of youth and beauty and good sex in his book to convince women that estrogen was this so-called youth pill, which was the answer for all of life's ills, when actually it was all part of a tremendous marketing campaign aimed at menopausal women to sell hormones. And although we now know the facts about the risks of hormone therapy, the shocking reality is, is that much of this misinformation still persists and is still being promoted to women, and right here on YouTube, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video. This false narrative is being put out there to women at their most vulnerable time, telling them that when you go into menopause, you know, your ovaries stop working, um, your vagina is shrinking, and you are now left wide open for diseases to start in your life. This narrative was put out there by doctors, some of which are female doctors, and I was actually quite surprised at the tone and how negative it was, almost making women feel like, you know, you're shriveling up now and you are just losing everything and you're going right towards disease and right downhill, and that's not true. It's just simply not true. So why, you ask? Why would people continue to circulate this false information to women, knowing the risks? Well, for the usual reason, to make money. And now I'd like to share a little of my own personal experience with you, because there is happiness on the other side of menopause. And I know it is hard. Believe me, I went through it. I am now three years post-menopause, so I am three years past the day of my last period. I'm 55 years old and I went through menopause. I had my last period when I was 52. And I have to tell you that the two years after that date, that date that I no longer had my period, that was my last period, were difficult. Okay, I, I my personality I, I was never somebody who was depressed or, you know, anxious or 
or moody, and boy, did I get hit over the head. Okay, I experienced all of that because, you know, your hormones are so sensitive and they so much regulate your mood. The ups and downs, and you know, you, you, you're, you're better off just really going with it and accepting it and trying to adjust yourself because the adjustments that you learn going through this process will help you as you get older. You learn so much. I learned so much about coping, about how to uh, mitigate the effects of the hormonal fluctuations, certain uh, foods and herbs, changing diet and lifestyle, and adjusting. And no, you don't lose your vagina. It doesn't shrivel up. Yes, it gets more sensitive. Yes, it can thin. I mean, you know, it's kind of a revolutionary moment where a woman suddenly realizes how there was a higher power involved in your creation and that you are really like designed to procreate to have a child to to continue the human race and everything from the moment you're born is set up that way you're born with all the eggs you're going to have and then by the time you start ovulating, I think you only have about 200,000 left. And each month that goes by, you lose an egg and some, sometimes more. Um, you know, you, you're, you, some of them just get absorbed by the body. And they make estrogen. And they are there every month preparing for you to have a baby. And when you don't, the whole process starts all over again. And you never really think about it. You kind of get into a groove. You understand your body. You're juggling everything in life. Kids, you know, relationships, homes, jobs, everything. You kind of have everything going. And then all of a sudden, boom, things start to change. For me, it probably started around 40, 38, 40. I noticed a difference. But nobody told me anything. I didn't know. I didn't know what I was experiencing was all part of a grander scheme. Perimenopause. Um, the leading up to menopause takes a long time. There's a lot of changes. And if women would just know that they're going to experience this, then they can be more prepared. So your journey in perimenopause, that 8 to 10 year period, and sometimes you know there's two years of that towards menopause that's really, you feel it more. Um, but it, it ebbs and flows. Um, you know, sometimes you feel fine and you and you, you feel like your old self. And then other times you're like, geez, what's going on? My periods are getting weird. I'm not feeling right. I'm moody. You, pro you know, you get disinterested in sex sometimes. This is all part of the natural process. And there's a lot you can do. You don't have to turn to synthetic hormones. You can try your best. The recommendation now is to try to get through it naturally without turning to that. The only time they're prescribing hormones is if a woman has severe hot flashes, basically called vasomotor issues, like severe hot flashes and sleeplessness, and then you know you talk to your doctor, you have to weigh your risk factors and discuss it with your doctor, but you have to know what you're up against. Okay, and they'll recommend if you if you're going to take it, that it's for the smallest amount of time, the lowest possible dose, and then you have to see how you feel. But what women need to know is that it will make things harder for you in the future. It's tough to get off those hormones. It really is. Some women have tried cold turkey. Um, others have tried reducing it slower. But you've just thrown a bunch of estrogen in your body. You've tried to regulate something that is now in like haywire and trying to regulate itself. It's incorporating your adrenal glands and uh, your liver and your brain. Everything's working together for your transition and then you go in and you throw something synthetic. And not many women know what the hormone is made of. And I noticed that when this question was posed to some of these um, doctors uh, on YouTube, they, they, they dodge the question. Um, it's made up of conjugated equine estrogen taken from pregnant horses. What they do is they catheterize a pregnant mare, a pregnant horse, 
and they drain her urine and they use that in a lab to chemically create estrogen and that's what they're giving you and then they'll use also progester progestogen and they, they make that from like you know a combination of wild yams and things and then obviously chemicals and they try to give that to you to, to, to give you what they think your body is missing and is going to help you with the hot flashes and apparently it does apparently it's helpful for the hot flashes and for the sleeplessness but again it's a temporary band-aid and you are not you know learning how to get through it okay we gain wisdom whenever we go through things so you're not doing that you're literally postponing it and when you get off of it many times your your symptoms are much worse than if you had just tried to go through it naturally I want you to remember something ladies healthy women flash it's normal and it's to be expected so if you can try to go through it and I'm not judging anyone who wants to use hormones please it's up to you what you want to do um, a lot of the moodiness and uh, like depression and anxiety and nervousness and stuff is called is caused a lot by adrenal fatigue because your adrenal glands are now working a lot harder to with your ovaries to try to make a new estrogen which is estrone um, and that's made in the fat cells of your body that's why it's important not to crash diet when you get into menopause because you need your fat stores so ladies remember fat is your friend you need some fat and I'm not saying unhealthy fat okay I'm not talking about excess fat hanging off of you I'm talking about you know muscle and good strength and some fat and you can you know not worry about having a little bit on you because you're gonna need that you're gonna need that in the years to come studies have found that women of lighter weight have more bone loss they found that across ethnicities the thinner or the lighter weight a woman was, the more she had bone loss. Bone loss is, is one of the biggest transitory things that you'll find with uh, menopause. There's kind of like a big descent that goes on right when you hit menopause for like three years and then it levels out. Um, they don't know why that is, why the drop off. There's a lot they don't know. They're still studying it. In fact, that women's health initiative is still ongoing they're still getting funding they're still following these women it's a wonderful thing and we should be thankful to these women that participated in this clinical trials because they've helped us younger women and they've helped us know um, you know hormone replacement therapy has been around for a very long time it actually was FDA approved estrogen replacement 1942 with the objective of getting every woman on hormone replacement so they didn't really bother studying menopause because they thought oh well we've got a cure for that we, we can deal with that we don't have to worry about what's going on with women and then all of a sudden all of these women started getting you know uterine cancer and, and breast cancer and blood clots and they went whoa whoa wait a minute and they did another study and around 1975 they found out that uh, um, just having the estrogen was really a problem and they needed then somebody came up with the idea okay well we have the uterus is all about progesterone so we need to supplement the uterus to protect it from getting cancer and that's how they came up with the estrogen and progesterone I was also at my doctor's office complaining about my moods and what's you know going on with me my lack of feeling like I'm alive and had a purpose and I was just so unhappy, really, and that's all she could offer me was, well, I could give you hormone therapy, but that wasn't an option for me. I did not want to do that, so I was left figuring it out on my own, which I did, and please, if you haven't watched my menopause, perimenopause video, signs and symptoms, and my experience, please watch that, and I'll link that below, too, because I share a lot of helpful ways that you can ride this wave, and that most of it has to do with making sure you get phytoestrogens into your diet and the best one for me was edamame and the red clover and there's also a pill that you can take too if you are more inclined to take supplements I'll link that below and it has red clover in it as well as uh, I think it has soy in it and women have found that very helpful and these things do work 
And no, there aren't clinical trials because they can't do clinical trials on herbs and, and phytoestrogens and plants and things like that because they can't standardize it. So, you know, these are doctors have to go with science-based things. And they, they tend to not go with these lifestyle choices, which, believe it or not, end up being much better for you in the long run and in the short run than taking any kind of drug. Now, I want to tell you that once you get past this two to three year time frame, okay, which for me was good two solid years, you're fine again. The hot flushes and flashes subside. You can sleep again. Your mood comes back. I have told so many women this. Hang on. Hang in there because you will get through it. And when you look back, it's just like a blip in your life. If every woman focused on the pain and suffering they went through to have a baby, they'd never have another one. Yet women go on to have several children, do they not? We forget. We forget the pain. We forget, how about the morning sickness? Boy, I was sick for months. But yet, I still got pregnant again and had a second baby. Okay, so we're tough. We can do it. You can get through this. And if you can't and you want to discuss hormone therapy with your doctor, then do so. But no, you are increasing your risk of cardiovascular disease, st uh, strokes, and blood clots considerably. People are spinning the data, and I want you to be aware of that. Okay, they're saying, oh, well, there's an additional eight people that got breast cancer. Well, that it was considered statistically significant the eight people out of 10,000 women that got um, breast cancer, the eight women um, that got cardiovascular disease, the eight additional people who got um, pulmonary embolisms and blood clots, okay? It was, you've got to put those all together because you don't know which one you're going to get. You don't know. Don't focus just on the breast cancer thing. And by the way, I heard a doctor on YouTube say that you can't just get breast cancer that quickly. It just, it just does not happen. That it takes time and you, and no, it doesn't. You can get breast cancer within one year. I have, when you're, by the time you're my age, 55 years old, you have seen and you know women with breast cancer. And I know women who've gone for mammographies every year, who've been checking themselves, and within a year's time have developed breast cancer. I know women who've been on hormone therapy and developed breast cancer. I know women who have been on the birth control pill and developed blood clots and have said and have gotten off of them immediately and will tell all of their friends, don't take birth control pills. There is a risk. You know, when the pill first came out, that's why they know a lot about estrogen. When the pill first came out, um, the pill um, was very high dose, high, much higher doses than it is today. And women were getting blood clots at very young ages. And they were like, whoa, what's going on here? They realized it was the estrogen. So they started, you know, cutting this down. And a lot of women went off the pill. You know what they noticed, too? That when this Women's Health Initiative study came out, and it was published like in the early 2000s, like 2002, there was a significant drop after that in breast cancer. They believe that the increase in breast cancer through the 60s and the 70s, then it continued on in the 80s and 90s, was because of hormone therapy. That increased a woman's ability to get breast cancer. Now look, estrogen does feed breast cancer. It's a well-known proven fact that estrogen promotes breast cancer. So we, as menopausal women, are now in a unique position where our breast cancer risk diminishes. Our risk for cancer is on the same, it increases with age, of course, because you're alive longer and you have more of a chance of getting diseases like, you know, cancer and, 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 and cardiovascular diseases and things like that. But because you're no longer producing estrogen, your risk because of that drops and you're only left with the age risk. Okay, so you're in the same population now with risk of diseases as a man. And guess what, ladies? Men lose bone too, not just women. 
okay? We're not just the ones who, now we do lose an accelerated amount of bone when we go through menopause. I told you for that two to three year period, but after that it dissipates and it levels off. And if you make lifestyle changes, if you make an effort to exercise and keep muscle on your body, because bone loss is more likely attributed to having low muscle ability and you know losing bone density because of being thin and not having a healthy diet, then it is so much with estrogen. And you know what they found out too? That women who are a little heavier and have more fat on them actually have less bone loss. Now you don't want to be obese obviously. That's going to increase your hot flashes and your flushes and your menopausal symptoms because you've got more estrogen. Because estrogen is made in fat cells. It, it promotes estrogen um, manufacturing. And if you've got less of that then you're going to keep your levels of estrogen more in check. And that's why they tell you, ladies, exercise, right? They tell young women, exercise, because it keeps your hormones balanced. It keeps your estrogen low, and exercise is good for preventing breast cancer. But once you start throwing those synthetic hormones in there, and you start giving yourself something that's against nature now, look, your body is telling you, you don't need this anymore. And personally, I think your body knows a lot more than somebody who's trying to sell you um, drugs and hormones and pills. It's a money-making thing, but you know it, it should only be used as a last resort and only for those vasomotor symptoms that I'm talking about, which are the hot flushes and the hot flashes. This concludes part one of my video series on the facts about hormone replacement therapy and menopause. Please go on over to part two to watch the remainder of this video. Thank you, and don't forget to subscribe.